morning upper school. Everyone has a story. Everyone's story has a path. And the reality is, is that as you live your life, as I'm living mine, you will find that there are often junctures in the road, places where you have to make some heavy decisions, some simple decisions. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about today is one of the things I've stuck true to, which is pursuing my passions. Making sure that everywhere along that path, I've actually stuck to who I am and what I love and believe in. And I've failed many times, I will tell you that right now. And I hold myself accountable for the failures and that it was my job to rebound and put myself back on that path wherever it was. And that's a tough thing to say and to understand, but the other part of it is life is a process. You're all on your own, I'm living my own, and yet we all intersect with each other on any given moment at any given time. I'm gonna warn you now that some of the pictures you're going to see are hair zones. I am currently a hair-free zone. But what I thought would be great for you all to see and learn and know a little bit about is how my path has gotten me right here, right now, to this stage. So of course, we all have a childhood. We all start out very little, very innocent, and we're living our lives unbeknownst to who we really are becoming, but we get on a path based on our families, and we find our way in a world that seems so big, like a giant playground with lots of questions and lots of unanswered questions. At five years old, my parents started me on piano lessons. I went back and forth between loving it and hating it because the practice was sometimes difficult and hard and I wanted to be outside playing. But the reality was, I was asking myself questions, who am I and who am I becoming? So speaking of hair, <laughs> you move into the formative years of your life. You start experimenting. For me, it was definitely about style and fashion. I'm not sure how stylistically uh, fashionable that look might be or is. But at the same time, I was creating a story for myself. I started playing saxophone and French horn. I took bassoon lessons. I started singing in choirs, not only at my church, but I ended up joining a group called the Philadelphia Boys Choir. And in these formative years, I was creating an identity for myself of who I was becoming. In those opportunities, I had amazing chances to sing with famous people. That one picture is Luciano Pavarotti, who recently passed away, famous opera singer. But it gave me pathways to new things. The boys' choir took me overseas, I toured, I traveled, and I started figuring out that this music thing might actually be a path for me. I wasn't sure. My parents definitely weren't certain. They had worries that maybe this wasn't the right path because of the question marks that go with actually making it in life as an artist, as a musician. But the reality is, it inspired me, and my parents continued to support me. So then you get to college, and this is a tough time too, because you have to start thinking about focusing and defining yourself. This is when life gets a little more serious. And even in high school, life might feel serious, but this is when you have to start thinking about a career and a major. And I ended up transferring three times. I couldn't find the right fit. Each time I arrived, Miami first, University of the Arts second, Moravian College third. It wasn't until I got to Moravian that I did have the right path and the right fit for me. I was a little ahead of my time in that I was a jazz piano player who wrote classical and modern music. And in the 80s, 1988 when I graduated high school, I didn't have colleges yet accepting jazz and classical at the same time. That might seem unbelievable in the year 2013, but it was a reality for me. And so I kept moving and I kept searching and I kept looking for a place that would accept me for who I am. And I had to transfer to do that. Then you have to start thinking about work. In reality, you need a job. One of my first jobs, I was the great pumpkin in a pumpkin patch at a farm called Mary Me Farm. Some of you might know it, it's up near Lansdale. And the reality was for me, I needed money because I wanted to buy stuff. My parents told me that I should be working at a young age to understand oh, how far cool. a dollar can go. But I also realized that being the great pumpkin wasn't what I wanted to do for my whole life. I worked a lot of retail jobs. I worked at Montgomery Mall. I worked at American Eagle Outfitters, at Macy's. I worked at The Wall, which was a record music store. Even that still wasn't my calling, my passion. But the reality was I had to do it to figure out what I liked and what I didn't like. I, of course, then started teaching, and some of these early pictures show my early years here at AFS where I was hired part-time to teach the preschool music and start an instrumental program. So then you have to figure out this path again. Is it something you love? 
Is it something you like? Yes. And you can have a conversation with anyone in this world, and they will tell you that there are parts of all jobs that you will love and like and dislike and not love. And the reality for me was I started realizing that this teaching thing actually might be for me. I never thought I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't even start taking teaching ed classes until my junior year of college. But the reality was it set in, and it showed me that if I work hard, I can also play hard and have a good time and a fun time at my job. So you still have to have fun. You have to laugh. You have to celebrate. So you have to put yourself out there in a world that says, hey, your job is going to end at some point. You get to go home. You get to still have a life and discover things about who you're becoming. And so when you are remembering to celebrate the bigs and the little things, you also still have to keep an eye on your fun path, too. You need to have that balance and that reward outside of work. I'm a DIY person. One thing I discovered about myself, I love home ownership and home projects. I didn't know that until I bought my first home. But one of the things I discovered is if I tried something and failed at it, I had a several, several pathways or decisions in front of me. I could try again and learn from my mistakes, or I could pick up the phone and hire someone who actually knew how to do it. You have to call your own limitations. I learned how to do basic plumbing. I learned how to do basic electrical. But when it came to important plumbing and important electrical, you pick up the phone. You pay a professional. But I love that aspect of turning something that was nothing, some of these pictures show this, of moving into our first home, and then actually building and growing and designing and making it your dream home of where you want to be or where you think you want to be. Celebrating those successes. Being able, after you're done doing a project, building something for the first time, this was actually a, a, a pad for a shed that was being delivered. I didn't know I needed to build a pad for it. I just figured they just brought the shed. And the people selling the shed said, well, you got to make sure your land is level and there's something for the shed to sit on. So you go to Home Depot, you talk to people in aisle 12, you come back home, you start building, things don't work right, you go back and ask more questions. I didn't have to pick up the phone for that one. I figured that one out on my own. So the other part of life is surrounding yourself with people who share common goals. I joined a band back in 1989 called Echo. I'm still in that band. That's pretty amazing for any of you who follow groups or bands. Most bands don't make it past the five, maybe even ten year mark. We're still going. And it's because we're friends first, we succeed and fail together, and we also share the common goal that we want to write music for each other first, and then the bonus, the icing on the cake, is we put it out for the world to see and hear too. We've had a lot of success. We were signed by Sony Music Epic Records for three years. Major record label. It was two years of heaven, one year of hell. Because the reality was, is when the marketing people stopped promoting you, how do you continue to sell your product and make it in the world? In the end, we stayed together, and we stick to our goals, and here we still are today, performing. Teach yourself new things. So in recent years, I've gotten really curious about the recording process. It wasn't until I was 35 that I started thinking, well, hey, I can play music. What if I learned how to actually record it? I now teach the digital audio class here at AFS, but the reality was it was curiosity that put me on the path to say, wow, I'm paying all these people to record my music for me. What if I could actually start doing it myself? Not just for the money savings, but just for the fact that I had control over it and I could do it on my time. If a 2 a.m. lightning bolt struck, I can get up, turn my equipment on, and start recording. I started getting into high-performance cars. I always liked pictures of them, but the reality was I now was able to afford to buy another car and another vehicle and say, wow, I can actually do this as a hobby on the side. Still have to take time to relax. I've always loved the game of golf. It's as much a mental challenge as it is a physical challenge, but it's also taking time away from the work, even your passionate work, to make sure that you have opportunities to still relax and try new things. Be outdoors, find a hobby, pursue that. So you got to have friends in your life. I hope you're laughing often. One of the things I remind myself of is when I am with my friends, I laugh the most. Yes, we sometimes make fun of each other, but it's a love-like thing in that we know each other's foibles. We know each other so well that we can call each other to the table on things. And when it comes down to actually being a good friend, that is really important to be able to do that. I also put a quote here about if it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. If your friends are turning on you, or leaving you, or not backing you up, you also have to make decisions in your life when it's time to walk away from those friendships. And I've had to do that as well. And as hard as it is in the moment, the 
The reality is, sometimes life is better off when you walk away. Sometimes you actually come back together as friends again. So I mentioned new hobbies. I'm really into cars all of a sudden. I'm actually brewing my own beer and my own wine. I sort of have become this like bohemian where I'm living life for all the fun moments of stepping out and liking the aspect of there's a lot I don't know. Science is super cool when you're talking about making something that people are going to actually eat, ingest, or drink. You have to do it exactly right. And you fail. I've had bad batches and good batches. With cars, I'm getting ready to take my race car to a racetrack for the first time. Am I nervous? Absolutely. I've got my racing helmet, I've got my gloves, I'm going to go on a women of prayer, but the reality is it's something I want to pursue. And then the other passion is home ownership. Uh, my wife and I decided that it would be fun to have two homes for a while, and then we realized that that was a lot of work. And so now we just have an apartment nearby work, and we have a home near the beach in southern Delaware. And so that also was an aspect of our life that says we can still be two places at the same time and be 100% invested in both. Stay in touch with family. I have brothers and my parents are both living, which I'm very blessed for that fact. But stay in touch with those folks in your life. You won't believe how much they can still ground you. Um, my brothers live in Durham, North Carolina, so we do a lot of Skype. But we also go out of our way to make sure that we do get on a plane or jump in a car every now and then and see each other face to face, the same way they come back home. And I reach out to my folks. Even when they're away, you make a phone call, you check in. It grounds you and puts you back on that path that hopefully you're already on. The other part, and I think most of you probably knew this, but if you didn't, you do now, is find someone to love. And you probably all do know my wife, Allison. We met here 13, 14, 13 or 14 years ago. Um, and the amazing part was is that we realized we had a lot in common together. And so when you figure out how to love and bring someone else into your life, you also figure out how to put yourself second or sometimes last. And that can be really hard. Because the ego in us wants us to always be about me and who I am and who I'm supposed to become. But if you're always steamrolling everyone out of the way to get to that path, you're forgetting about the importance of connecting with others. And whether it's your family community, your friend community, your work community, or all of the above, keeping that all front and center is so, so important. So there's also a reality to all this. When you and I look around, there are clearly people who are not on the path at all. And some of you might feel that way. And I can empathize, because on any given day, I sometimes lose track of where my path is going. I sometimes have to remind myself, where was I headed? And the reality is there are sometimes times when you won't have a path at all. It's all foggy and unclear, and you're not sure where to go. I throw this out to you, just the way I started, to think about your passions. Think about what actually makes you happy. On the days when I wake up a little bit confused or a little bit lost or just having an off day, I remind myself, what do I love? What do I enjoy? What are the things that bring me back into focus with who I'm becoming? And I say becoming because I'm not there yet. None of us are. And so that path is so important to keep you on that journey, that opportunity to take you to where the next place is. And sometimes it will go where you thought, and many times it will not. And that's the rebounding part again. So you may think you know where each path ends, and in reality, it might take you to a brand new place. What I'd love to do is actually put you inside my other office. This is my touring rig that I use with my band Eberlin. So when we go out on the road, this is what I take with me. I actually have double the amount of keyboards when I'm in the recording studio, but the reality is, is when you're out on the road touring, a lot of times you're playing clubs or um, performance halls that aren't nearly as big as this stage. And of course, my bandmates, drums, guitar, bass, keyboards, uh, lead singers, we take up a lot of room on stage. They couldn't be with us, but what I have is a recording of a song from our newest album, called Island. Uh, this album, it's unbelievable what's been happening for this, and this is just an example of me in my 43rd year of my life. The last nine months have been unbelievable. I've been featured in an article in Keyboard Magazine. I've performed a, a guest solo spot with Mike Keneally, the, uh, the former guitarist for Frank Zappa's band. Frank Zappa has since passed, which is why he's the former guitarist, but Mike Keneally is still alive and well. Um, this album came out in June of 2012, as you can see. Uh, we just eclipsed 14,000 copies sold, which is unbelievable because the album we put out in 05 has only sold 10,000. So that shows you how the internet, iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, all those other worlds are helping us with that. 
Uh, and we are getting ready to write a new album. We've decided we're not going to tour on this album, but write another new album and then tour on both albums. We've been to Europe, we've been to Canada, we've been all over the U.S. Um, if curiosity gets piqued by what you hear today, you can just jump online and check it all out. But I appreciate the open ears. The reason this song is called Island, I love sharing this because a lot of our fans are trying to figure out what does this song mean? It's because when the five of us in Eckland come together in a room, we consider it our own island. Nothing else in the world matters because we have an opportunity to be together, to work together. And when five busy wives all commit to being in the same place on a Tuesday night or a Saturday morning or a Sunday evening, you can call it your island. And many of you have islands in your lives. So I hope you continue to live on your island, but don't forget about reaching out across to the continents around you and stay connected. Hoping you enjoy Island. Students, if you are curious about being part of TEDx, John Weisen would love to meet with you. May 11th, I believe, is the date. Um, and for any of you here who are curious about the process, this was a lot of fun for me in putting this together. But I hope you will also share your story and maybe talk even about some of your passions, some of the things you care a lot about. They don't have to be your career path. They can be your hobbies. But in reality, it's still a part of who you are. So here we are, Island. Hope you enjoy. I hope you have a passion. I hope you go find it. Hope that pathway opens itself up for you. Good luck.